Welcome to this video tutorial on how to render water in Rhino. We're going to start by opening up our perspective view and I'm going to draw out a large water surface just using the rectangular plane tool like so. Once we've made the surface of our water I'm also going to add in a simple box and this is just here so I can check the reflection on the water surface and test it as I'm making this particular material. It also helps if you push this just below the surface so you can kind of see anything that's happening below the water as well as above it. Now to test this we're going to set our viewport to a rendered view and what you'll find when you set up a simple rendered view in Rhino is it looks very white by default. This makes it very difficult to test the properties of our water because we can't really gauge the type of reflection we're getting on the surface. So before I continue with my material creation, I'm first going to add in an environmental map into this scene. I've made a more detailed video tutorial on this process, which I'll link in the bio, but for now we're just going to open up the environment tabs. You can find that on the right hand side or just by typing in environment into your command line. We're going to click on the plus tab here to add an environment and create a basic environment and then in this i'm just going to add an hdri texture and for this particular tutorial i'm using a sunset image like so once you've added this you can just right click on your environment and click on the set for all environment channels to add it into your scene now usually these are quite bright so again i'm going to lower this down to around a 0.5 just to darken it in this particular scene like so as said, I've got another video that goes on this in more detail and also shows some areas and places you can download these particular textures if you want to add this particular one in yourself. Once you've set up your environment, you'll see we've now got the kind of nice sky that's going to allow us an object to reflect against our particular water texture we're adding in here. Now to begin to create our water material, I'm going to do this by going to Render Tools and opening up the Materials tab. You can find this under the tube of paint icon or you can type in materials to open this up. We're going to create a new material, we're going to make it physically based and we're just going to double click and call this water. Once we've set up the material I'm then going to select my plane object here and I'm going to right click and assign my material to the object like so. And you can check that because it's now turned white. I'm going to lower the roughness down to a zero which will make it a perfectly shiny material surface and then we're going to go to the detailed settings here and we're going to add an opacity channel. This will start by making our material semi-transparent and it gives it an opacity amount of 0.2 which we're going to stick with for this tutorial. For the IOR value we're going to actually change this to match the real world properties of water and you can find that using the little drop down arrow here and here we've got a water setting that we can apply this to. Once that's set, we've essentially now made a kind of glass-like water material. This is kind of perfectly still at the moment and hasn't got any ripples, but to check how this is working, we can go to the render and the render preview mode, and you'll see this is essentially working exactly like a glass, perfectly mirroring our object on its surface. Now in order to give this a little bit of bump, we're going to need to add a new channel into our material properties. This can be found under the detailed settings again, and we're going to add a bump and normal displacement channel. Under this, and under the bump and normal map, we can add in a map that's going to give us a little bit of a ripply surface to our water. So I'm going to click on the add new texture option, and we're going to use some of Rhino's inbuilt texture maps to add this ripple. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can use a noise texture, a turbulence or a wave. For this particular tutorial I'm going to use a turbulence texture because I find this creates the most effective kind of ripply pattern on the surface of my plane. Once you've added that in you'll suddenly see we're getting this little bit of rippling that's occurring on our material here. Now usually this is quite large on the surface and as you can see on mine it's quite big in scale. So we're going to play around with a few parameters to dial this down. Usually with the turbulence settings I kind of keep all of these the same. I don't usually play around with these parameters but I just change the mapping depending on the scale that I require. At the moment it's looking quite big so I'm going to dial this mapping right up to a 10 here. 
Now often what I find is the little render preview is quite different to how this actually looks when we render out our scene. So usually I'll up this to a higher value, check it in the preview, and then I'm going to go to render and click on the render preview to give a more accurate representation of what this materials currently look like. And there you can see we're getting those nice ripples on the surface of our water. I think this is still a bit large for this particular material, so again I'm going to up that mapping again to around a 20 this time. And we're going to go back and test it using that render preview option. And this is looking a lot better there as well. So now you can see I'm getting that really nice rippling effect occurring on the surface of our water, just like my kind of material should do there. If you're finding that's too strong, what we can then do is once we set the scale of this, I can click back on my material and under that bump and normal map, we've got a percentage value that controls the value of that particular texture. I'm going to lower this down to a sort of 12% here, so it's a little bit more subtle. And you can vary this depending on the strength of your texture that you want in your scene. And there you can see the ripples occurring here. Now this is pretty much at the point where I've got my water texture working. If you want it slightly lighter or slightly more transparent, we can always go back to that amount value and lower it down if you want it to be more transparent in the scene. So we can play around with these settings to really dial in the look and feel of the water you want. Sometimes you actually want your water to be quite dark and almost like a sort of muddy surface, like a kind of river or a pond. So in that case, you might want to up that opacity amount and go back and change the base color to a sort of darker blue or green. And this will give you that slightly darker look to your material to make it look a little bit more like water. So you do need to sort of play around with these settings just to change the effects of your water to really hone in that particular material quality you're going for. So that was a quick video tutorial on how to create a water material in Rhino. I hope you found this video useful and if you want to watch any other videos on rendering, texturing and creating imagery or drawings in Rhino, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.